Good morning, college football fans. Welcome to week number three of SEC Kickoff. I'm Vince Dooley. Well, things got interesting around the SEC in week two. There was a little bit of everything. Big road wins, shocking upsets, and an intense conference battles. All of the excitement from last week is carrying over to this football weekend. Before we preview Saturday's SEC action, let's take a quick look back at week two. Auburn at Mississippi State. It was a tight battle for a half. Auburn went ahead on a 100-yard kickoff return. He breaks a tackle. The chase is on. McCaleb inside the 20, the 10. Touchdown, Auburn. But then Mississippi State responded with 21 unanswered points. Their quarterback, Tyler Russell, threw the ball well, 222 yards with three touchdowns. Mississippi State's defense was tough. They harassed Kyle Frazier. He threw two interceptions. It was a great win for what will be a very fine Mississippi State football team. Florida at Texas A&M. The experienced offensive line of Texas A&M and the young quarterback, Johnny Manziel, who has great mobility and an explosive offense, ran the ball, and it looks like that Texas A&M was going to dominate the football game at halftime 17 to 10. But in the second half, had a complete turnaround. The Gators made some great adjustments. They quit rushing, so to speak, and did more containing on the line of scrimmage and as a result of that, was able to stop Manziel, who ran quite a few quarterback draws. They stopped him six straight times. A&M was 0-6 for third down conversions. This Gator football team is talented. The Missouri Tigers hosted the Georgia Bulldogs in Columbia. It was a nip and tuck football game with Missouri's potent offense, and they led 20-17 with about a minute left in the third quarter. But in the fourth quarter, Georgia went ahead 24 to 20. Jarvis Jones, he put two nails into the coffin of Missouri. Nine tackles, two sacks, two forced fumbles, an interception, and in both cases led to Georgia in the ball on the one yard line and then the five yard line. Great win for Georgia going out to play Missouri, a good football team in a wonderful atmosphere. Louisiana Monroe at Arkansas, an improbable loss for sure for Arkansas, who was heavily favored, in fact led 28 to seven. But this Louisiana Monroe football team is pretty salty. They sacked Tyler Wilson two or three times and he left the game with a concussion and no doubt had a big factor in the football game. But yet Louisiana Monroe with a nifty quarterback and a daring coach had 575 yards against the Arkansas defense. This is one of the great upsets, and I think we'll continue to see that in college football. There are more good football players today and less scholarships than ever before, so there's a great balance in college football throughout the country. Washington visits Tiger Stadium. They got a real education because this LSU football team dominated winning 41 to three. Keith Price, their talented quarterback, was totally shut down. He was sacked four times. LSU rotates 10 football players on the defensive front, so they keep them all fresh. And the offensive line with four backs that could probably start anywhere in the country, they amassed 242 yards in totally dominating this Washington football team. Zach Mettenberger, and maybe LSU fans want him to throw the football more, but he did a great job in directing, handing the ball off to those great backs, and in throwing and completing a lot of passes when he had to. There were certainly a lot of big plays in week two. As I mentioned last week, normally four or five plays determine the outcome of each and every game, and those plays could come at any time. As part of this week's Football 101, I'm going to show you how Georgia used one player in three different roles to defend Missouri. Linebacker Jarvis Jones was named SEC Defensive Player of the Week for his outstanding performance in Columbia last Saturday night, and the award was well-deserved. We often said in coaching with it, we always are looking for that football player that will rise above the coaching. And Jarvis Jones is certainly one of those. Now, he is a disciplined football player, 
as you can see on three different occasions. First of all, in this basic Missouri set, he lines up on the line of scrimmage and he's ready to play the run, as in the case of a quarterback handing off to the halfback and makes the play here. Ball is loose. Then the second thing he's able to do, which he did later in the ball game, he comes back as a linebacker back here and falls back and makes the interception. And the third thing that he's capable of doing, in case there's a sprint out this way, he can trail as bad, as good as any player I've seen in a long time by getting around a blocker, skinning himself, so to speak, and then he put the chop, the real strong chop, on the quarterback, Franklin, and caused another fumble that went down to the one-yard line that actually ended the ball game for Missouri and for a win for Georgia. After watching the tape, I'm sure more offensive coaches will be looking out for Jarvis Jones, number 29. Now let's shift our focus to this upcoming weekend. This week is our head coach one-on-one -on -one segment. We sit down with Arkansas head coach John L. Smith. Coach Smith's Razorbacks are looking to bounce back with the goal of upsetting Alabama. The Hogs will have a great challenge, but a huge opportunity this weekend as the number one team in the country comes to Fayetteville, Arkansas. Well, our guys know what it is to work hard. They know what it is to do it daily. They know what it is to grind. That's why we keep uh, you know, asking them to do that. So uh, from our standpoint, it's always hard to focus, but our guys, I think, will do a real good job of focusing and not overlooking anything. Game day in Fayetteville is as good as it gets. Game day in the SEC in my opinion, is special. You have a special league. The Hogs are very unique, let's say. Where would you see 85,000 standing up calling the pigs? Uh, it's a unique situation, and our fans are as good as there is in the country. Now that we've heard from Coach Smith, let me give you my thoughts on the big game in Fayetteville. Arkansas and Alabama will face off at 3.30 Eastern on Saturday. CBS will be in Fayetteville broadcasting their first national SEC game of the season. The Alabama-Arkansas game doesn't have quite the luster that it had at the beginning of the season when both teams were in the top 10. And also the fact that Tyler Wilson, Arkansas's great quarterback, is very questionable for this football game in light of the concussion. And Alabama being so dominant, and then Arkansas giving up 575 yards against Louisiana Monroe. But nevertheless, they're playing in Arkansas. There's no question Arkansas will be on the rebound and they will have one heck of a challenge, but also there's a great opportunity. And as we saw, anything can happen from week to week. Saturday will mark the third week of the college football season. Traditionally, week three in the SEC symbolizes a classic Eastern Division matchup, Florida versus Tennessee. For this week's SEC flashback, let's jump back to 1998. Steve Spurrier's Florida Gators were on a five-year winning streak against Tennessee. The 1998 matchup would end in historic fashion and propel the Vols to a national championship run. As Tennessee comes racing onto the football field, wherever you listen, ladies and gentlemen, at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee, it's football time in Tennessee. And off to the fullback, powering up the middle, this is Sean Bryson. Bryson breaks it to the 45, to the 50, to the 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, 64 yards into the end zone. In front, this is Martin looking. Pass downfield is up for grabs. Who's there to grab it? It is Perilous Price. Did he grab it? He grabbed it. Where did he grab it? In the end zone. Give him six. Back to throw. Long pass across the middle. Man is there, but it is intercepted. Pulled away by Deion Grant, who makes the interception at the 25. Back to the 30. The kick by Hall is in the air. The kick by Hall is good. Snap. The kick is in the air, and the kick this time is no sir Reed. No sir Reed. Final score, Tennessee 20, Florida 17. Pandemonium reigns.
Neither Steve Spurrier nor Philip Fulmer will be on the sidelines Saturday when the Gators and the Vols get together in Knoxville. But this will still be a huge early season battle in the SEC East. Here are some of my thoughts on the matchup in Knoxville. Well, there are new faces in this uh, great rivalry. Old coaching friends, Derek Dooley, my son, and Will Muschamp, who were together at LSU and also at Miami under Nick Saban. Uh, Tennessee has Tyler Bray, and he can throw the ball, and he's got receivers that can catch it as long as he isn't rushed too hard. And he hadn't been in the first couple of ball games, but he will be in this ball game against the Florida defense that is very, very good. Florida has Jeff Driscoll, and he reminds me a lot from a physical standpoint of uh, Tebow. He is big and strong, and Florida also has this great running back with tremendous speed and Mike Gillisley, who is averaging over six yards a carry in the first two ball games. The game could come down to the kicking game, and in Tennessee's place, they've had some problems uh, with their kicker, and as a matter of fact, even changed their field goal kicker for this ball game. Nevertheless, two good football teams will be going at each other, both vying to be in the top 20 teams in the country. Let me give you my thoughts on the big game in Fayetteville. Arkansas and Alabama will face off at 3.30 Eastern on Saturday. CBS will be in Fayetteville broadcasting their first national SEC game of the season. Well, the Alabama-Arkansas game doesn't have quite the luster that it had at the beginning of the season when both teams were in the top 10. And also the fact that Tyler Wilson, Arkansas's great quarterback, is very questionable for this football game in light of the concussion. And Alabama being so dominant, and then Arkansas giving up 575 yards against Louisiana Monroe. But nevertheless, they're playing in Arkansas. There's no question Arkansas will be on the rebound and they will have one heck of a challenge. But also there's a great opportunity. And as we saw, anything can happen from week to week. So far, we have previewed a couple of significant conference matchups. In week three, two SEC teams will step out of the league for big non-conference matchups. The Missouri Tigers look to bounce back from their disappointing loss to Georgia when they host Arizona State. The Sun Devils looked impressive against Illinois last week. The last time that Missouri and Arizona played in last year's game, Missouri lost in overtime 37-30. I think there's going to be another exciting game. This is Arizona State uh, dominated Illinois by the score of 45 to 14. There's no question that Missouri will be looking to come back after their loss to Georgia. They'll be representing the Southeastern Conference in a big, big game. Their quarterback, Franklin, who I enjoy watching, he's the most relaxed uh, quarterback tailback that I've ever seen. He can run the spread and run it well, but he's going to need some help in the running game. I look for another great football game, and I feel like that Missouri will be coming back after their loss from last week. The late game on Saturday features the Ole Miss Rebels hosting the Texas Longhorns. Rebel fans will have all day to get ready for this game as kickoff is set for 9.15 Eastern. ESPN will provide the coverage from Oxford where the Rebels look to pull out an upset over the Texas Longhorns. Coach Hugh Freeze has done a terrific job at Ole Miss. They're 2-0. Last year, they only won two football games. Their quarterback, Bo Wallace, has really been sensational. He was 15 of 22 and 174 yards, plus he rushed for 53 yards, and they went over UTEP. Two long touchdown passes, plus he ran for one. They're a fast-paced, no-huddle offense. On the other hand, they'll have their hands full against a talented Texas team who uh, knows how to rush the passer. So right now, it could be an upset. And I'll have to admit, I'm pulling for the Ole Miss Rebels. Well, folks, I've enjoyed another week talking SEC football with you. We are reaching that time of the year where the weather's a little cooler, but it's still gonna be hot on the field. I expect to see a high level of intensity throughout this weekend's games. I hope you enjoy your football weekend, and I look forward to seeing you next week on SEC Kickoff.